Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the average amount of time you'll be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. Once the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as the treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. Even if you don't know anything about 12 lead interpretation, you can already tell that this rhythm is super duper fast. Let's go ahead and take a look at lead 2 across the bottom to see if we can identify it. One of the first things I do when I'm identifying rhythm is I determine the rate. Now I apologize for the poor quality of this ECG scan, but we can still determine the rate using this 10 second strip by breaking this into a 6 second strip first and I'll show you how to do that. What I do is I take two lead groupings. Each one of these, remember, is two and a half seconds long. And then I will count five large boxes beyond that. Now that I've made a six second strip, I'll count the R waves and determine my rate. I'm counting 19 R waves, which would equal approximately 190 beats per minute. Next thing I'll usually do is look for P waves. Now in this particular rhythm, I'm not seeing a definitive looking P wave. It's sort of like an amalgamated P slash T wave. Beyond that, I'll then look at the R to R interval. You'll notice the R to R interval here is very, very consistent, nice and regular. I'm also seeing that the QRS complex here is fairly narrow. So with this criteria in mind, I'm gonna diagnose this rhythm as SVT. Now let's go ahead and take a look at each lead grouping to see if there's anything more malignant or anything more serious going on. In my anterior slash septal leads, Vs1 through V4, I'm seeing a lot of ST segment depression, and this may be indicative of a global ischemia related to the high heart rate. My inferior leads, leads 2, 3, and ABF, are revealing more of the same. and I see no difference when I'm looking at my lateral leads. Leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this scenario. So we're going out to a local community college for a 20-year-old male who's been complaining of heart racing. Another term for this could be palpitations. The patient reports that he's been drinking several energy drinks over the last few hours in an attempt to study for his finals. He denies any chest pain or shortness of breath and is alert and oriented. Vital signs are as follows. Blood pressure is 120 over 72, pulse is 182, respirations are 19, and his SpO2 is 98% on room air. As the vast majority of your points in static cardiology are scored through correct treatment of this rhythm, we have to determine if this patient is stable or unstable in order to choose the correct treatment algorithm. Now for unstable criteria, 
I use the acronym CHAD. And this stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration in mental status, and dyspnea. Based on my patient's current presentation as well as his vital signs, he meets none of the CHAD criteria. So my final diagnosis for static cardiology is going to be a stable SVT, or supraventricular tachycardia. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the treatment. Just like with every other static cardiology card, I'm going to be in treatment by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV O2 monitor. Because this is a stable SVT, I'll then attempt a vagal maneuver, or have rather I'll have the patient attempt a vagal maneuver, and then I'll move on to medications. For SVT, the most definitive medication is going to be adenosine. The first dose of adenosine will be 6 mg rapid IV push, and the second dose will be 12 mg rapid IV push. Following the adenosine, I could consider the administration of diltiazem, and this will be given as a slower IV push. The dose for this patient is going to be 0.25 to 0.35 mg per kilogram. Additionally, I could move on to beta blockers such as metoprolol, atenolol, or labetalol, and then complete my treatment with IV fluids. And of course, rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And remember, you can make your own custom playlist using my videos to help you study for your national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.